Well, another accuser has come forward in the Penn State sexual abuse scandal. According to his lawyer, a 19-year-old man claims former coach Jerry Sandusky gave him whiskey and molested him in the Penn State football building in 2004 when he was 12. Next week, at least six of Sandusky's previous accusers reportedly plan to testify against him at a pretrial hearing. Joining us this morning from State College, Pennsylvania, is Jerry Sandusky's attorney, Joe Amendola. Good to have you with us this morning. Uh, these latest allegations, have you spoken with your client about them? Yes, and Erica, we don't know much about them at the present time, but Jerry has denied those allegations as he has the, the original allegations. In term but we're hoping we'll get more information as we proceed. Uh, so, so you're saying he's denying these along with the original ones. A lot of the uh, alleged victims here have said uh, in him speaking out to the New York Times, uh, to Bob Costas, they feel re-victimized. Are you alleging then that all of these allegations that, that multiple people have made are totally false? Yes. As a matter of fact, Jerry has maintained his innocence from the initial allegation back in 2008, which started off as a, an allegation of fondling and then grew over several months into much more serious sexual activities. Jerry has always denied any inappropriate sexual contact with any of these then kids, now grown and young adults. In his most recent interview with the New York Times, he described his interactions uh, with some of the alleged victims as horseplay. How does Jerry Sandusky define horseplay? Basically kidding around with kids and being very physical, wrestling with them. Uh, many people who know Jerry and have known him over the years describe him as an overgrown kid. And when you, when you really talk to people who know Jerry and you look at some of the old films of Jerry interacting with kids, you really get that impression. He's just a big kid who likes to interact with kids. He's always loved kids. He and his wife have adopted six children, three of whom were foster kids. They've raised them and provided them uh, a home life they otherwise wouldn't have had. He, he has done things that even you have said were inappropriate. You said in an interview you would never shower with a 10-year-old boy. He admitted to doing so. Does he understand why so many people find that absolutely inappropriate? A lot of people find that inappropriate, but, but it's not criminal to, to, to get a shower. In fact, I think the way Jerry has described it, the kids with whom he showered, Erica, were basically like his own kids. He treated them like his own kids. And Jerry really didn't feel he was doing anything wrong in getting showers with them. Now, would I do it? Would you do it? Would other people do it? Perhaps not. But I think there's a big distinction between getting a shower with a, with a child who you treat as your own child and, and committing a criminal act, which is what's been alleged in these cases. Uh, there are a lot of allegations. There are parents who are, who are alleged and have been proven to, to do things with their children that are inappropriate. So, so being a parent isn't necessarily something that enters in here. But, but just again, to pose the question to you, you've said you see why that is not a good idea. Does your client at this time, especially after everything that's been said after that admission about showering with a 10-year-old boy, does he understand why so many people find that inappropriate? <laughs> Oh, I, th I think he understands that people, a lot of people may, may think that's inappropriate, Erica, but again, that's not a criminal act in and of itself. In order to, in order to, to, to establish a criminal act, you have to show some sort of criminal intent mm -hmm. in regard to these charges. It's in the intent to obtain some sort of sexual gratification, and Jerry has adamantly denied that. You've said, too, and, and, and you just said in this interview that you believe all of these allegations are, in fact, false. What about these eyewitness accounts? Do you believe those were made up as well? Well, when you say eyewitness accounts, we have one in accuser number eight's allegation uh, by a custodian who now is in a, in a home because he suffers from dementia. He has never actually testified. He's the eyewitness, and we've never heard from him either as a grand jury. In regard to number two, the Mike McQuarrie allegation, Jerry has adamantly maintained that that activity never occurred. In fact, in fact, we spoke with someone who indicated he was victim number two, and he said the activity never occurred, but then later changed his, changed his story and is now saying he is a victim. So we'll have to what? wait and see how that shakes out in court. Why would someone make that up? Why do you think Mike McQuarrie then, if, if in your estimation he is, he is lying, why would he make that up? Well, well, well in, order, in, order, in order to believe Mike McQuarrie, you would have to believe he told, he told Tim Curley, Gary Schultz, and Joe Paterno that he observed Jerry Sandusky having anal sex with a young child in a shower at Penn State, and they did nothing about it. Now, I know those three men. They're not my friends, but I know them. They're reputable, very conservative people. I don't believe for a second that they were told that type of information and did nothing about it other than tell <coughs> Jerry Sandusky simply Joe, don't shower with kids in the Penn State shower rooms anywhere. That makes Joe, no sense, Erica. Joe Amendola, we're going to have to lose it there. The satellite will cut you off. Joe, thanks for your time.